this is going to be a little experiment. I don't know if it's going to work. This is solder paste. It is just uh, tiny little microscopic balls of solder in a... Uh, I don't know what the heck they call it, but it's uh, in, in a a liquid that suspend in a suspension or whatever that um, you then put it on a PCB apply heat and uh, it it melts I have very horribly with a toothpick spread it all over the pads of this personality chip and it is uh, getting close to the uh, the festive season but actually I, I just have a, a I'm using this plate here as a uh, the ceramic plate is like a an insulator for the hot air that I'm about to blast on this thing uh, first thing up so I put the paste down already now I'm just gonna place the components roughly where they should go and um, in theory surface tension will sort of real uh, align everything so it doesn't have to be uh, you know perfect so I'm going to put the other components on this and then we'll come back, I'll turn it on, the uh, the hot air thing, and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright, so all the components are in place. Uh, I have this uh, hot air or reflow station. It was a cheap thing I bought off eBay for 35 bucks. It's got a number on it, 858D. Uh, it's rebranded, has a bunch of different things. But I think if you just search for 858D, you'll find it on eBay or Amazon. I'm going to set this to, uh, I think I'm going to set this to about 320 degrees Celsius. And uh, let's see how this goes. So there's the gun. I'm going to start a little bit above. I'm probably about two, three inches above. Right now all I'm doing is, is I'm, uh, I'm trying to heat up the PCB. I want all the copper on the PCB to be at roughly the same temperature. Then, in theory, when I zoom in real close, uh, things should melt fairly quickly. So this is going to probably take, I'm probably going to spend like 30 seconds here, um, just heating everything up. Now, in theory, the magic of surface tension, again, will clean up all the, the solder paste mess. It will all bunch together. It will realign all the elements, all the chips and everything on here. The, that's the theory. I will see if this is the truth. I'm right, gonna start coming in a little bit here. Again, this is probably gonna take I don't know, two, three minutes maybe. Oh. Stop for a minute, reposition that capacitor. I went at an angle. I wound up fleeing ow, 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 ow. Well, it already started to flow. Alright. So be it. I'll get this whole thing really warm. So let me try repossess, re, uh, repositioning the, uh, the camera here. Hold on a sec. It's an awkward angle, but for you, maybe you'll see everything though now. Some things are starting to flow here. I think the first thing I'm noticing is I just don't have... I don't have enough solder paste for the pins on the microcontroller... Uh, the, the microcontroller, on the flash chip. But hopefully you're seeing that. You're seeing it. It goes from a dull gray to a shiny and it uh, sort of congeals together. That looks good. Well, again, I think I'm lacking some solder paste here on a couple of the pins. Let's 
it's going to be warm. But you can see the pins um, at the bottom. Whoop, whoop. There we go. At the bottom of the uh, the video there, those pins could use a little more solder. Eh, I might give it a little more heat. But this is sort of one way to get a PCB that looks a little more professional, in theory, or or professional in quotes. Now the real way to do this would be to get a stencil. Uh, a stencil is a little piece of uh, a little sheet of steel that you put over this, very thin, but it has cutouts where all the solder uh, paste should go. And then you just scrape it over the stencil, it goes to where it needs to go in just the right amount of thickness, and it works perfectly, but I did not get a stencil for this. That is going to be very hot. I think it worked well enough. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that cool for a minute here, and then um, we'll take a closer look at it. So I've cleaned it up, and you can kind of get a good idea here. You can see uh, the pin on the uh, the memory chip closest to the, the camera right now. Uh, it did not get, or it received the least amount of uh, solder paste, but still, it looks like it's got a, a connection there. So despite the messy initial appearances, everything looks like it's got a solid connection here. And I could go retouch or touch up those pins with the, uh, you know, a, a soldering iron and some regular uh, solder. But that that looks okay. I think, at least for the sake of demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Interesting. You can see just a little bit of a gap there underneath the chip. I probably should have, while the board was warm, pushed down on the chip there to push it all the way to the pads, but uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue, not for this, hopefully. I've been poking poking at the uh, the components with a, my finger, trying to gently pull them off, and they're not budging. I think we're good. Now, part of the problem is that there is a extra resistor on the back here. So how do you do that? Because if I apply heat to this side, well, this side's going to be warm too, and the components are going to start falling off. I could tape this side up with Captain Tape before I do that, or I could just do this resistor with a, uh, a soldering iron, which is probably the smarter approach. The smartest approach would be to just move this over to this side and release a new version of this uh, chip. Uh, but the reason it's over here is because the way this PCB is designed is that this whole middle section here could be covered up by a, uh, a through-hole chip, so I don't have a lot of room. Maybe I could turn that resistor 90 degrees and put a second one below it? Maybe. But it, that gets that resistor very close to the edge of the PCB, and things can go a little bit weird. Maybe I could take this, maybe I could move everything over to the left a little bit. Move that over, maybe move it all over just a little bit to the left and get enough to make both resistors fit there. So that looks okay. 
Yeah, but I've got everything out. It's, it'd be silly to not to try it. So, okay, so here's some Captain tape. This is uh, heat-resistant tape. And I think I'm going to need to cut this piece in... Oh, you can't see that in two. So, down there like that. I don't think it's sacrilege to cut across Santa's face. We'll find out. There, so that should keep everything uh, in place while I do this side. I should have probably done the reverse and done this first. There's a, oh, there's a whole lot of things. This, I wasn't thinking about mass production when I designed this PCB, and I probably should have, but so it goes. So here, let me show you the whole ugly process real quick. Here is that uh, solder paste. Let's grab the toothpick. I don't need much, really. I mean, that that is already too much. And really, I'm just going to try and spread it. There, that's good. I really don't need much. And just try and divide and conquer. Get a little gap between the two sides, like that. That's probably too much solder paste, seriously, but so be it. Okay, next step is a resistor. So they come in these reels. I've cut a little bit off of one. There it is. Flip it upside right. Come on. Come on, there we go. Drop it into place. Okay. To the hot air. Oh, and I should reposition the camera again. Here we go. Hot air on. Coming up to temperature. That is it. Oh. <laughs> so, of course, the PCB is absolutely scalding hot right now. But you can sort of see that is a soldered resistor. Come over to this side. Try and remove this. Captain tape again. The PCB is 300 something degrees Celsius, or at least it was. It's cooling down. It'll, it should cool down pretty quickly. Yeah, I can touch that now. All right. So again, those pins on the left need a little bit more solder. I should be a little more liberal with my applications of a uh, solder paste but other than that it looks fantastic now you can see all those little tiny specks of solder those need to get cleaned up simple way to do that a little toothbrush a little dab of rubbing alcohol Let's zoom out of here get you out of my way again toothbrush Oops, too much alcohol, that's okay. Just a little... little scrape around there. I have these, uh, what are they called? Chem wipes or something like that? Chem wipes? They're, they're like wipes that, uh, that are like used in labs and doctor's offices. They don't have any lint or they don't produce lint. Which is why I use them. And uh, everything smells of rubbing alcohol. But there you go, everything is cleaned up, and that almost looks professional. Now, what I should do, 
or what I should have done, or what maybe I will do is, where one to mass produce these, which I'm not necessarily going to, but when they get made, you panelize them, meaning that they're basically put in a grid like this, and they're, they're still all attached. Uh, there'll be little stems connecting each one. And what you would do is, you know, the panel would be however big the panel is, and you get a stencil for it, the stencil being that, uh, that, that sheet of steel that uh, goes over it. You scrape the solder paste over the whole sheet, so you do like 20 of these at once, and then you put all your components down, hot air, put all the, the, the components get soldered down, and then you break them off, and there there's your, uh, your completed unit. That is how you would mass produce these, but uh, this is a little hobby project right now. Also worth noting, since we're here, Notice the different size chips. I went ahead and tried to hand solder a a 208 uh, mil, or that is 208 uh, 208 thousandths of an inch across uh, chip versus the 150 mil chip that I would recommend and that this board was designed for. And it does fit. It does work. This chip does work. But again, it is going right up to the edge of the pads. You are just barely fitting it on there and it is a it is a bit of a hassle but you know it works now which there we go that's the one i just did all right so now i am going to program that real quick with a different programmer um you don't need to see that i already covered that and then uh we'll see if it works all right, so this is the TL-866 Plus. This is the, uh, the box that it comes in that I've shown before. And uh, I've got the uh, this little uh, SOIC-8 clip hooked up to the memory chip that we just put on there. And uh, it goes through this adapter into the, uh, the ZIF socket of the programmer. So pin one on that programmer uh, socket is pin one on the chip and so on. Okay, so... Let us go over to the actual screen here. The first thing I want to do is I want to have it detect. This is, uh, as you can see, it's called XG Pro version 851. There might be a newer version. This comes with the, the programmer. You can download it, off, download it off of the the website for this programmer, too. You can get updates there. So this is official software. So the first thing, I'm going to hit this... Uh, magnifying glass with a 25 on it. This will detect the chip and if it doesn't then I know something is wrong right away. And it does. It knows it's a wind bond and it has a bunch of these different selections. It's a W25Q16. Now what type? Well I know it's a BV SOIC8. You could do the generic one. Um, you could just do a W25Q16. Any one of these would probably work. I will select that. And I'm going to open up the ROM that I created. And it's in a binary format, just the default region, starting at address 0, all the defaults. I'm not changing any of the defaults here. Click on OK. And I can see here on the uh, the left side of the screen, I can see the code, or the, the, the contents of the ROM. Now, all I have to do here is hit this P button up here at the top to program it. And I'm just going to hit program. See, it even has a nice little picture showing you how uh, your chip should be uh, on the, uh, the socket. So if you compare that to what I have here, perfect. So I'm just going to hit program. And it's going to do a few things here, which is why I like this programmer more than the cheaper one. Um, the first thing it does is it checks for the ID and it makes sure that the chip ID that it reports is the same as the company or the, the is what it expects for the chip that's been selected. So it re, it's it's doubly reassuring that you know it knows what chip it is and it's a good chip. Then it erase, erases the thing so there's there's no old data left on it. Then it programs it. Then it verifies it so you're really certain that whatever you want on that chip is really there. It only took a few seconds, we're done. That is it. Close out of the program. And uh, we can remove that. We can remove the chip. And we are ready to put this thing in a droid and see if it works. 
All right, so here's the motivator. Here's the chip. Um, I'm not going to put the whole BB unit together. To prove that this thing is working, we don't need to do that. So again, here's the chip we just made. You can tell because of the poor or low amount of soldering on those left-hand pins. Stick it in. It's already been turned on. Turn on my remote. Here we go. And it's very loud when it's outside of the uh, the BB shell. But I like that. That's good. That means you'll you're going to hear the noise through the shell when it's rolling around. Um, this chip, uh, the or I should say that the the ROM that I just burned, all the audio on it is stuff that I either made myself or uh, I sourced it from. Uh, a royalty-free public domain uh, audio library. There's a couple of clips uh, for like the blasters, I think, that came from a royalty-free uh, audio library. Everything else came from Dext, like I showed in a, a previous video. So I feel comfortable sharing it. Um, it's it's not a great personality chip, but it's the first one that I have that I can share. And with each one that I create, it's you know I learn a little bit more. <laughs> There should be some lower pitch. Yeah. All right. So there you go. That is an example of using hot air to assemble one of those uh, personality chips, an example of using the TL-866 to program it. And in the description, I will provide a link to where you can download the ROM that I put on this chip, and you can use it for yourself. It's under one megabyte in size. That means any flash memory chip that you use when you make your personality chip, as long as it's one megabyte or larger in size, you'll be able to use that audio, uh, that, that, that ROM. Good luck. And as, again, I've said it before, but if you make one, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. Good luck.